Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's May! <laughs> Surprise, it's still May! May 30th, 2023, Bryce Castillo. Getting you started with the Great Night Pre-Show. Great room, green room, a whole dang thing. Thank you so much for joining me, Bryce Castillo. Here for the Great Night Green Room Pre-Show. Great room, a whole dang thing. Bryce Castillo. Uh, coming up, we got, uh, we got a special guest for you. We got uh, some topics. We got some good topics today. We got some fun topics today. We're going to talk about... Uh, I'm going to give you a Wordle update. It's a shocking, breaking news. We might be breaking tech news uh, on this podcast, or I might have we might have discovered an exploit that uh, that other people already had. Uh, we'll talk about some anime stuff. We'll talk about artificial stuff. We're going to do a ranking. And uh, we got the Would You Rather bot coming up in just uh, just a little bit. But we're going to get you ready for uh, the green room in just a moment. Of course, I want to remind you to support us. And it's because you support us over on Patreon, patreon.com slash great night. That's where you can go to support this. Throw us a couple of bucks and uh, we'll give you the bones podcast or bonus podcast every week. That is a great. That is a, now, that's a, now that's a good. Now that's a good podcast. You can also get access to the Diamond Lounge in our Discord. Get email updates. Get an RSS feed that you don't have to log into. It's all for you over at patreon.com slash great night. Thank you, everybody, who is supporting us. Uh, we're going to have a whole thing coming up for you uh, in, in just a moment. But in the meantime, it's time. So time the time and check in with the green room. Green room, can you hear me? Hell yeah, we can hear you. It's just me and a brushwood. Awesome. That's all I need. There you go. <laughs> That's all I need to get this now, shit, no, get no, this shit no, going. Who is that? Wrong brushwood. I know. No. What's up? Nope. Nope. There is no such thing as a wrong brushwood. It really I just is. need one. I just need one. You know, this <laughs> we is can keep true. this. We can keep this boat afloat. <laughs> you know, I've been hearing my kids do a lot of stuff. And I realize yeah. you really do just need one brush. You wood. just need one. Yeah. Now two. <laughs> yeah. Gets that's... gets a lot. I mean, look, you are the world's expert in yes. too many brushwoods. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you look around and you're like, I don't know. This is getting to be a handful. Oh my gosh. So Brian uh, has already gotten his um, dad's day gift from Callie, the youngest. Uh -huh. She's ten, and they had to fill out. It was like a little poem thing, and then they like. Poem. Wait, I always say point. Poem. Poem. It's a poem. 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 I always say it wrong. But anyways, poem. Wait, wait, what's the right way? It's apparently not poem, like I say it. You say it poem? I do. I don't know why. I, I think I Poem. Think, poem. It's poem. <laughs> wait, so like, like, uh, uh, is, uh, I'm trying to think. It's like, is Maya Angelou a great poet? <laughs> <laughs> yes, she is, actually. <laughs> oh, my favorite. <laughs> Poet. <laughs> poet. <laughs> yeah. Poet. Poet. Po poem. No, poet and poem are fine. Yeah. But you have an oi. You're like you're like an old British punkster. I have no oi, idea oi, where oi. it came from. I don't know why it's stuck. Even though I've practiced, it's still there. Some people just say shit weird. It's fine. Yeah, well, I definitely do. So Is there like a Hall of Fame of shit you say weird? Oh. Yeah, no, I definitely had to go to uh, speech therapy as a kid. So, like, this is, I think I'm just, I, I've decided I'm just so visual that words just kind of just get out there and we're all happy that they happen. Yeah. So, yeah. Dude, you're, you're looking for minimum viable product. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Whatever needs to happen <laughs> so everybody is, is okay. You know that, like, I'm opening the door, I'm walking around the corner. <laughs> like, like, that's all that, that needs to happen. Everything else is gravy. Yeah, exactly. If I'm communicating thoughts and feelings, then uh, y'all should be really excited about that. Mm -hmm. But uh, now the uh, poem. I said it right. The poem. I like poem better. It sounds better, doesn't it? Sounds it sounds like an onomatopoeia. Yeah. <laughs> poem, poem, poem. It's like now, a, like, like now the, I'm like going to get confused. I'll have it, to think about it again. Every time <laughs> I say it. <laughs> it. It's like the sound a pogo stick makes. <laughs> yeah. Poing, poing, poing. Well, uh, she says uh, in the po poem, poem, poem. <laughs> Sounds so stuffy. We're stuffing. literally going to get stuck in, <laughs> yeah. this, in this feedback loop for the rest. Congratulations for the next two and a half hours. It's just going to be me and Bonnie going back and forth with poem or poem. 
on this. And then uh, it says, who wonders, it is like a long list of things about Brian. And then it says, who wonders why his daughters are funny is definitely, mm. you know, a theme throughout. And, 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 <laughs> and then one of them is, he worries, like, he, it, it, she did the same poem, poem for me also. So I know that, you know, it says, oh, what there, does there, she there, worry there was, about? There was a structure. There's a structure. Like, gotcha. He, he, is this something she got from, from her school? Yeah, or? this is for school. And so she filled it all out, and then they laminated it, and she put little drawings on there and stuff. And then one of Good them looking was, out to school. Yeah. For getting, for getting these gifts. I know, even out. like for Dad's Day, which yeah. isn't even till the future, you know? So, like, she's oh, yeah, already Because cause this is the last, we're right. already done with school. We're right? done with school. Last week, uh, last Friday was the last day. And uh, we have all just been sleeping in. It's been yeah. amazing. So, all right, Pete, everybody day drinking at the arcades. Your, your ride is over. The oh. kids, the kids are, oh, the kids yes. are overtaking them. Yeah, no, you guys have to get out. You get know, out. Just like, get, get out. out. <laughs> Find something else to do. It, yeah, I can't even imagine day drinking at an arcade. That sounds, um, I mean, I don't know, that? but no, there's a whole like, have I ever, oh, uh, almost assuredly, I mean, yeah, yes, but, 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 like, no, but there's been a whole, industry built up around it yeah you know it's like they, well what do you think dave and busters is oh that is weird but that's like where people who want to have a meeting no it's where people don't want to be ashamed about day drinking in an arcade go because it has yeah. brass railings and uh, uh <laughs> you know shiny wood <laughs> if you have brass railings and shiny wood and pay an extra five dollars for onion rings, then congratulations. You're here for a meeting. You're not just wasting your life playing the Jurassic Park shooter game. That is absolutely that. And I guess like some people would not be able to get titties reimbursed on on their like, you know, tab for the like a lot of times they go to strippers. Yeah. Right. But then now they can't really do that. So you might as well have arcade. You might as well go to the arcade. That have like pictures of women I've, in two tops. Yeah. Although I wonder, I don't know. I'm sure that there's a Breitbart thread about how those have gone woke too. But like uh I I had never heard, even in, in Florida, in South Florida, I had not heard of the cultural element of Texas that was t male business people taking meetings at titty bars Seriously? during lunch. Yeah. Oh my that God. That was not a thing that I had ever heard of in Florida. Like the biggest thing about titty bars in Florida during the day was the food. Mm -hmm. People would say, oh, well there's, there's good food there. So I would assume that like there were some people that were like, well, let's take a meeting. But I had, from what I've I have gathered from other people, it at least up until recently was like a culturally understood thing that you know if you're in business, you know you have an advertising business or you put up signs once a month, yeah, because somebody wanted to do it, you you wind up going taking a, a you, lunch meeting at a titty bar. You know what? Yeah, I think there's a market for the fan girls again. Like, let's make it a little okay. less. A little more like artsy and oh, retro. Oh, okay. So you know, let's make it nostalgic and tantalizing, but yet still like women can attend and you know not be as. So you want to broaden? You want to broaden, broaden? Yeah. Broaden. You want to you want to embiggen the scope <laughs> right. of of customers, right? So okay, all right. So, so like, what are what, it, what what are the yeah. alterations that you need to make? to a standard strip club to get women to also take their lunch breaks there. Okay. Well, it would definitely have to add some, I mean, not, you know, we've got the whole, uh, uh, you know, I'm sure women like going to titty bars too, sure. but I mean, yes. you know, that just taking aside, whatever, but yeah. let's just say we're going to make it so you can write it off for lunch for your, for your, business thing yes so um because usually what they would get away with that is that it's going to show up if you're just ordering food right everything else is cash so it's like you're not obviously going to yeah. try to write off your tips yeah like exactly. like on your on your corporate card but what's going to get rung up on your corporate card is like blank steakhouse dog exactly. steakhouse or something like that 
Well, I just think it is. Shout out to everybody who's checked their bank uh, statement at the end of the month and been like, like, when the fuck did I spend $600 at Micron? Oh, oh really? Oh. It shows up like Micron technology. Uh, it, it's usually something like disguised. Tech or, yeah. Well, I don't like, know but if it's always tech. It's always, it's like. Black box solutions or something like that. I don't know. That makes me feel like I need to go through my uh, (laughs) through the credit card statements. (laughs) uh, I don't think you have anything to worry about. Uh, But no, I think that that it is it is very deliberately not like big knocker saloon or whatever, right? Right. right. The yellow rose. That's the one here in Austin. I yeah. Guess or no, what's the one on the highway? It's like like the, the Palazzo um, or something. Oh, Palazzo, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I drive by them a lot. And so I see their marquees and all that. I think also mm-hmm. I remember that one from Friday Night Lights. I think location in Friday Night oh, Lights. I bet it would be. Yeah. So I think I think it... <laughs> Is okay, yeah, yeah. We're, we're we're getting back to, to the what what would need to change, right? To to uh, expand our horizons and include more women who want to take their lunch breaks at strip clubs. Well, dudes too, right? Okay, so like you know, you dudes have, on stage too. Dudes, dudes on stage too, and I mean, serving. We're, we're, we are we're, we're getting into a Bud Light situation where we're starting to dig into our our yeah. already established audience for a new Ooh, audience so let's let's understand true. you throw one wiener up there and all of a sudden it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna mix up the mood but i think it has to be artsy like artsy yeah so you're not so even like immersive theater yeah and it's more like you know like uh 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 audrey hepburn's book the the breakfast at tiffany's okay and she goes into the little the little club and they're all like with the fans or whatever. So it's kind of a little cheeky nod, but it's a little more like upscale and you definitely are benefiting from like the people's physiques that are walking around, but it's more about like more artsy. Like you're, you're like, Oh no, this is art. I I think this is a very interesting concept. Yeah. Okay. None of it screams time crunch lunch to me. Uh, (laughs) Like none, none of this screams like, all right, can I get, Four beers, uh, a steak, and a baked potato in an hour's time while mm. I'm looking at a thing I want to look at and then yeah. get out. We need to make it a little bit more I'm thinking, steak and shake. Yeah, I'm thinking two hour, two a to two three hour, hour lunch, lunch meeting. What are you, French? What no, I mean, that's what the dude, that's what the Texas vibe is. Like, it if is? you're doing a, a meeting. Oh, if it's a meeting. meeting I'm doing a lunch meeting. You're doing the lunch, just going for lunch. Yeah, well, I don't know about that. Yeah, the... the, the I guess if yeah. you're doing that, if you're doing a lunch meeting, mm-hmm. then all you got to really do is keep meeting for about another hour and you can cut out the rest of the day. You can be done with working true. at noon Yeah. if your lunch meeting stretches until 4 because you're not going back to the office no. to touch blue, make it true, and then leaving. Yeah. So if you're just there, it's like, oh, sorry, honey, the meeting went till four. Yep. This then is that's true. that. Well, and that's kind of how the Texas and in my lunch and meeting. in my world, I didn't define a gender on who honey was. <laughs> There you go. 2023 I know. progress. But what about this? Because yeah. you do offer an interesting question about the the the, the quick lunch. Yes. <laughs> Is what if there's a counter that just looks in on it? <laughs> and then so like you get you're you're separate from all the actions, but it's like watching a TV show play out. And so you're you're just at the bar counter and so you see that's... everything behind you and you're removed. Is there glass or is there not glass? There's glass. There's glass. Yeah, absolutely glass. Everything looks more special behind glass. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, so you're glass, so you're like like kind of settling, like at like a like a standing counter. Are you sitting down? No, I'm not just oh, how about down. this? Yeah. All right. There you got a is. bunch. You got a bunch of rooms, right? right? Naked people doing naked people things. Oh, they're not totally naked. Okay. They're more artsy right. than Look, that. we can table this. We'll yeah. get back to it. <laughs> uh, I think I, we're in we're in <laughs> very big danger of eliminating the specialness of a strip club if we're eliminating the stripping. But let's table that for a second. Okay. Imagine it however you want. Separate. But it's one of those 
like restaurants where it slowly rotates, but instead of looking out into a view, various different naked people. No, I love it. Doing naked people things. Yeah, absolutely. And at that point, because you're constantly getting a new one mm -hmm. by your vantage point, it can be a little bit more artsy. They don't all need to be dancing to the same yeah. trap music song. Like one of them can be playing. <laughs> laundry. <laughs> whatever, whatever kind of bullshit you're doing, doing our college. <laughs> like, like, you know, like, like that kind of, that kind of stuff. Right. Right. And then at that point, maybe nips are out, maybe butts are out. Like maybe there's wieners who knows. Right. At that point, yeah. now we can maybe mix in a wiener here or there because like, like it's, it's like, uh, I don't know. I'm not really into that, but you don't have to sit there for two minutes. It's moving along. You can just avert your gaze or keep your gaze on the, on the other one. We can invite the gays. They can also show up. It's this nearly is, June after all. I think this is a great idea. And I have a name for it. What is it? Tableau. Tableau. Oh, Tableau. Get Tableau. Oh. Boom. <laughs> Tableau your mind? Yeah, Maybe that's Tableau. Okay. Your mom. All right, all right, all right. Okay. Maybe, maybe that's maybe that's for this for the insiders. The the I got tabloid T-shirt. Like <laughs> right. maybe maybe we do need, we need to highbrow it a little bit more. Yeah, I'll blow your mind. And then you can put it off. There you go. That's it's all about. I think that that has changed in 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 recent time. The the uniquely Texas idea of. Uh, uh, going to a strip club and writing off a four-hour meeting. Um. Yes, definitely, definitely. I think no. I I don't think. I think the strip club part has. I think dining different places. Well, that still, no, that's business. Yeah, like, that's yeah, just business. Yeah. But like, uh, yeah, I definitely think uh, it's transitioned a little bit away from a. Uh, me too came for that too. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. And also they just you know, some places just got seedier and seedier and they have like, you know. Oh, you think maybe if it were more upscale. Yeah, absolutely. If it were, you know, but, you know. You know, there's a lot more women in the business too. So. Want, yeah. And that might be it. Because I, I will, will say, say I've I, never been a professional businessman. Yeah. <laughs> I have always just been a feral content creator scavenging around the outskirts of the entertainment industry. But like uh I will say that if I were in a group of professional people, it would have to be baseline fairly skeezy to have that be a lunch play yes or it would have to be like a quote unquote like tradition it would be like a like well you know like if this is a big thing and we gotta go to the silver bottle or whatever like you know they, like they would have to be a like that would be the play that i would imagine that being pitched as but it would very rarely be like what are you guys thinking Mexican? Yeah. Like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Thai, maybe. Right. Like, Stephanie, what do you what do you want? Like, oh, okay. You want pizza? Yeah. I don't know. I think we're gonna settle on strip club for three hours. Like, like it's not gonna be that. It's that never thrown out to the group. Right. Will will it come back with that solution? Absolutely. Although it might be like pizza, Thai. Oh, I know where you can get all those things at one place. There we go. Yeah. The the so. buffet. Although I would say if it were a like woman in a man's dominated industry, tremendous power play. Oh yeah. Cuz if the woman suggested it, all of a sudden she's the coolest woman on the planet. Absolutely. Like like that that is, you know, a a market inefficiency. Like, uh, do you think take that one, ladies? Do you think that's what the Ther Theros lady did? Or the Theros <laughs> lady. I think I think I don't know. What what do you think? I hear they have good steaks at the <laughs> Palazzo. <laughs> In her turtleneck. Yeah. Like... <laughs> you see, she's like uh, she's going to jail. I know. I was seeing that news today, and I was just like, hmm, I don't know. That's big. She seems like uh, uh, she is trying to rebrand. Rebrand. Yeah. In. 
uh, there was a big feature in the New York Times about how she is a dedicated mother and she felt like she was taken advantage of mm -hmm. by like a, a, a mentor of hers and she mm -hmm. is not the con artist that has been portrayed in, in all these different uh, versions mm -hmm. of the story, but rather she is just just a mom trying to get along and uh now she has to go to jail but yeah. like you know it's really her children that will suffer yeah i i saw a little bit of that chatter and and, it, and she did in all fairness have her children before any of this like one of them at least before yeah. things started to uh get, she, she had one kid where she's like don't worry honey you'll be rich forever oh, <laughs> and then burr, 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 burr. Yeah. oh my gosh and is she actually married or is that i mean it's the same dad for both children so i guess he's just in charge i don't or, know yeah i don't know i i actually like custody gets i weird. actually didn't read the feature because oh, i ran did. out of new york times free articles oh, man. <laughs> oh. Uh, I feel like such a shithead because I love feature stuff. And it was like, and also it was a great feature thing because it, it was in the realm of, <laughs> yeah, look at that. Right? See? $1 a week guys. I know. And I had one and then I, I don't know. I got pissed off at the New York times and I canceled my subscription. Why? When? I, it was, I don't know. I, I, what I will explain to anybody is long before our modern culture wars, mm -hmm. uh, it is a journalist's right to complain about the New York Times. It, okay. ha it, it happens throughout school. It happens when you are a professional. It happens at every phase of your life as a journalist is you complain about the New York Times and you make fun of their decisions. The fact that it has now become politically coded is unfair and discriminatory to me. Oh. Because I should be allowed to complain and be annoyed with the New York Times as much as I want without anybody looking at it as me denying truth or supporting Trump or something like oh that. I'm allowed God. to do it. I'm the real victim, Bonnie. Oh, I, you know, I believe that. And I agree. I think that would be a I like very... you so much better than Brian. <laughs> this is so much better. This is so much more pleasant. This is such an amazing time. <laughs> I am a lot more supportive. Huh? This is great. <laughs> I love it. Uh, it would be Brian be bashing you already. Uh, huh? No, he. I don't know. He'd come up with some other thing and then start talking about a thing he saw one time in 1992. But oh, like, yes, this is true. Uh, I can do that too if you really miss no, it. No, this I is can going great. This something. is going great. In <laughs> fact, forget I mentioned anything. Let's just keep rolling. Uh, uh, no, but I didn't. I didn't read it, so I don't really know the situation. I mostly know about. The other journalists who are dialoguing about mm. the whether or not it was a well written feature or or not. Oh, so you read articles about the article? About the article, yes, oh, and listened to podcasts about the article. Wow, but summarizing you all the various different things that I mostly wanted to get out of the article, which was to have my own opinion about what other journalists were saying, so I could judge other journalists on whether or not I agreed with their opinion on news value and writing. Oh, do you have like a little hit list of journalists that you agree and don't agree with or what's your When I was most dialed into it uh, uh undoubtedly. Uh-huh. Uh now because you know, I don't know. I think it would be even charitable to call me a journalist. So I, I don't. I don't re really even feel oh, like Justin. Well, no. From some would this... say you're probably the most journalist of all journalists uh, I... because you're not tied to some of the agenda. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, uh, one of the. Oh, look, Brian oh. Brushwood's in the chat. Look at oh, that. Oh, hello, Brian. Hey, Amen. <laughs> mm. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to this conversation. <laughs> 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 mm. Uh. No, I um, I don't think of myself as a journalist, mostly because as I was being brought up in the field, I, I came up in a field where you had to have a job with an organization to be a reporter. Mm. The idea of an independent reporter really didn't exist. Okay. Or like you were a freelancer. Like there, there were freelancers for magazines where like because it would be odd for like only the best journalists who were magazine writers got regular gigs at various different magazines. Most everybody else 
pitched a story to a magazine. The magazine said, okay, cool, write that up. They paid him X amount of money. They paid the other half when they delivered it. And that was the way that you, that you did that. But no matter what, you either had bylines or you were an employee somewhere. Mm-hmm. But at some point, a gatekeeper would say, you hereby are blessed with this thing. Congratulations, you are a journalist. So Otherwise, you, you, you're just a guy prank calling people. So what you're telling me is, here's my callback to, uh, I'll do my best Brian Brushwood. So it's like in the never ending story, when you're going through the laser eyes with the big titty sphinxes. Yeah. And they're just like, you haven't been through the eyes of the laser eyes being hired by some crusty old dude with a with a cigar effectively yeah and that's i mean i was at one point i was at one point but now i am no longer that i am a blogger and like bloggers were looked at as a certain element of like not necessarily scum but like (laughs) but 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 right feral right like there are there are house cats and then there are the feral cats that are running around outside and that that's what the internet was and while the world has rapidly changed. Mm-hmm. Like there is a full, totally different economic model of uh, uh, journalism these days. One that, by the way, totally favors me. Like it turns out that that this feral cat was actually just land rushing to where the entire world was going. Even then, I still will never really be able to shake the idea that like, yeah, but if I were a real reporter, I'd work at the New York Times by now. Okay. Like and that is, you but know. you can't bother to send them a dollar. No, because they did something that annoyed me, uh, <laughs> which is also why I'd be a bad employee. I know every once in a while I do have these crises of conscience, and I'm like, "What the fuck am I doing? What am I doing?" Like all my friends, I have multiple friends that won fucking Pulitzers, like, and like that's where I could be if I applied myself. I'm not applying myself. Like I'll go through this shit. And I'll get so far as to think of, well, who should I email if I wanted to work at the Washington Post? If I wanted to work at the New York Times, where, who would I email? What would I do? And then I, and then, almost invariably, I will start thinking about what my job would be, Oof. and I'd have to listen to people, and people would tell me what to do, and I'm like, that's I shan't. <laughs> oh my god i just end with a very haughty i shan't no <laughs> i'm like no i like this i like being out here in the wilderness foraging for berries yeah also i found this out so there was a big thing um there was a blog called deadspin you ever hear about a blog called no, deadspin I don't so know. this was a very it was gawker's sports blog oh okay um, and they were very very influential and eventually gawker oh. wound up getting sold for parts And the staff of that uh, website formed another website called Defector. Okay. Uh, And they are, I think, on Substack or one of the other uh, uh, platforms. And there was a big write-up about, like, how they created a journalist paradise. And it was worker-owned. And it was exactly the perfect thing that every journalist would want to work at. And they were so honest that they listed their salaries Ooh. in this article. Uh, At which point I was like, y'all are dumb. Because I make like twice what you make. Oh my God. <laughs> I make like twice right? what you make and, and nobody knows who the fuck I am. <laughs> like everybody oh, knows who you guys are. Oh, there it is, by the way. Oh my gosh. So, yeah. Maybe not twice. Uh, maybe after after withholdings, it's <laughs> it's twice. I, I I know what. Okay, yeah. So Defector's average employee salary for a full time staff is just shy of seventy k a year. Yeah. I make more than that. So uh uh and 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 that is being a feral little animal, nim, 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 just just yeah, living on the fat of the land around mm-hmm. around the edges. Like, I'm, I'm just saying, everybody in Defector, start your own Substack. That's my advice to all of you. You are being held down by the man. Liberate yourself yeah. for the economic benefit of your own Substack. You will all make more money, every single one of you, especially if people, uh, if people know your name. Man, I was talking with a friend recently, and, like, they had something happen in their life, and they're just like, man, I got to tell you, the worst part of it, the most existential crisis part of it, Part of this whole scenario is that I will never know. 
I will never know. But I think that's what the little feral nim, 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 is, is like at least you get a little more, a little more, like when you put it behind the veil of all the, of what, uh, uh, the official, the title, yeah. and the masthead, and, then, and the, you know, yeah. the filters that people go through, and everything, just to be like, oh no, we're more, we be more like this, not like that. That's red team, blue team, whatever. Then it, the story doesn't feel real. And I think what we like about people with integrity, and I would say you have integrity, right? It's like that's why, that's why you, even though you're on the fringes. Are doing better than somebody at one of the stacks is at least you're you've got the integrity involved. Well, yeah, Even I mean, I don't fun. know. The, the, I think you I know? think my own opinions about journalism and yeah. my own career aside, uh, uh, I do think that uh, the internet is honesty, the internet is authenticity, and that's what we've built this yeah. show on. Uh, that's what I've built all the shit that I've done on. And if you do that and you show up. Every single time, yes, and you don't leave people hanging, uh, then you will always, you know, people will respond, and you'll get better. You'll understand what people want. You'll understand what they don't. You'll understand what's what's great, what's mm -hmm. good, what's bad. Uh, uh, you'll go through different patterns, but like in in general, if you stick to it, you will find it. Like, I think if anything, I'm lucky that I was doing this kind of shit at a time where there weren't as many people doing it. Like, yeah. I don't know what it, it's like, you know, like your, your, your kids, uh, they all want to do internet stuff on some level because everything uh, is internet connected on some, on some level. Right. Yes. But it's like, I have no idea when literally every person on the planet, you don't have an advantage of some, like when I was in my twenties and I was talking about doing internet stuff, I had friends that would be like, Oh, the internet beep, boop, beep, boop. And it's like, <laughs> now they're all on the internet and they all do internet shit. But it's like, they thought it was nerd stuff. Now everybody's on it. Like the, yeah. the, the scope of who is competing in this field is insane. Yes. And although I, I did have an interesting conversation with the middle child who's 15. So you know, there's Pr that prime time to know everything, prime time to know everything. <laughs> but we were talking about the last of us, like what would it, cause that's like, she just made like a cosplay prop that looks so good. It's like Ellie's backpack keychain yeah. or something. I was just like, Oh my God, that is so amazing. You really could sell these, you know? And then we we're talking about, well, is there going to be a third game? You know? And it's just like, and she had some really good topics about like what, a third game would, would go into a good game, how they would ruin the franchise of, you know, what they did. So she had a lot of thoughts, but they were well thought out and, and I felt compelling, but then, um, but she's like, yeah, I mean, her thought is just like, well, you can't really explore Ellie anymore because like, she'll be all old and depressing, you know? So like, you really got to go with like a new with, character. Uh, yeah. New characters, like yeah. explore the world and let them like, be maybe, young. maybe like a young girl who plays bass in a band. Yeah. And, you know. <laughs> exactly. She really, she was just like, well, I liked being able to step into it and it'd be something that I could relate to. And it was definitely, you know, younger. So I'm like, well, that sounds like a 15 year old talking about that. And didn't you start playing the game? And it was Joel, like how old and yeah. sad is that? I mean, he's totally old and sad. And so she was just like, oh yeah, that's true. And I still like the game. But anyways, um, uh, it, it was a funny exploration along that line, but like, you know, people want to see themselves in the material with their every time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that especially in a highly competitive world. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Like where there's so much stuff that's going on. Yeah. Um, there is, you are, you are always, that's the one thing that's different is like back in the day, there was an element of arrogance in media because there, you had to climb a certain mountain to get the word out at all. Yes. Now you don't got to climb shit. <laughs> everyone's competing everyone uh, can broadcast yeah. everyone is there which means that there can be no arrogance in media unless it's theatrical arrogance that you mm -hmm. are like putting on that is attractive to certain people because you are always rolling out the red carpet you are always the customer is always right when it comes to media now yeah because everyone can do it like, like it is it is so insanely competitive no matter what
You know, that's a good point. It's almost Including like... for my time on this show. So, Brett, come on in here. Oh, yeah. Like that competitor. All right. I guess when you think about the, uh, the gatekeeper. Yeah. The gatekeeper was the technology. So you had to have proven yourself by mastering the technology to get word out. Hey, hey, hey. it's Brett. Hello. How are you? I'm well. I get on the mic and tell you that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I am well. Yeah, well, I mean, before, you would just have to be blessed. Right. Like, you have to get a job, and, and somebody would say, all right, well, first, mm -hmm. you, you cover uh, city council, and then if you're good at that, then you'll cover the other thing and then the other thing and then eventually you get a column and then eventually you die and we and we put your name on the front page and say here lies this person who wrote a lot and somebody would be like oh that's sad and that's the life of a journalist right like the, that's like but it comes from a blessing of a person who says you're allowed to do it now you need no blessing mm -hmm. the, the the platforms themselves come to you and say hey are you a loser if you're not, then you better create free content for us. Mm. And that's it. That's the poll. Well, what do you think about that? I uh, am always amazed to hear that journalism still exists with <laughs> all the things that have been going on in the world and how it changes. Rank them. What's the number one thing that's happening in the world? Uh, uh, that. Uh, Sorry, wait, no, we'll start at five. We'll start at five and go to the one. Okay. Uh, Bye. Uh, that marvelous Mrs. May Maisel ended. I I don't know if I'm one season or two seasons behind. It's so good. Mm -hmm. My Did mom it stay was good? So there. Uh, yes, all the way to the end. Mm -hmm. Yep. You thought though all of it was good? Well, no. Even that one like three episode arc where they really just wanted to go to Paris, and so yeah, so they just no, shot I, I, they just shot three episodes of Paris that didn't fucking go anywhere. But it was like. I, like, fuck it, we're shooting here. I enjoyed it as in that uh, Abe had to go, oh, my wife is still attractive and other people find her attractive mm. and I need to get on the, I need to figure this out and get on the, the plan here. Yeah. I mean, that's what I liked about it. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, four. Four. Uh, four. Uh, the biggest uh, things in media that are affecting journalism is the list. Number five is that marvelous <laughs> Mrs. Maisel ended. <laughs> All right, so four no is what? Here. Four is what? Uh, uh, four is, uh, well, see, that's further up the list, I think. Uh, I mean, I mean, just in general, all the politics uh, stuff that's going on. In that, general, all the politics well, stuff Well, I mean, going just on. like politics, because, because we we're talking about j uh, uh, journalism. Journalism. Uh, politics are an important thing for journalism to report. It's often been covered by journalism. Yes. Yeah, and they... They that is something that nobody else would look at if their jur journalism didn't exist. All the politics that are happening are number four. Number yes. three. <laughs> number three. Yeah. Uh, calamities in the world that are happening. Calamities like natural disasters. Yes. Or man-made. Or man-made disasters. Yes. The the dark side. The if it bleeds, it leads element yes. of Once the again, news. We wouldn't know. If there was no journalism. Do you think that we'd be better or worse if we didn't? It really depends on the thing. I feel like the crux of almost every dystopian novel is not knowing. Right? Mm. Right. Like, it's what like happened? everyone's happy. It's like a fake utopia. Sure. And then it's like, like, like there's like the, the, the character that you like, but obviously is like brainwashed. And yeah. they're talking to the protagonist. And they're like, like oh, I haven't seen Jake. Like, I'm sure he's very happy. And then you find out that either, like, she killed him or Jake died, sure, you know, or he's something. Sure, dead on a fence Yeah, somewhere. exactly. Like, and that's, like, the protagonist walks through an alleyway and sees Jake's head or something. And suddenly we get the reality. Yeah. Like, and then really going on. And that's, like, the big threshold is when you go back to the glassy-eyed lady and you're like, Jake's dead. It's like, no. No, no he's not. No, no, I saw him. I saw him. I was told that he was very happy outside of town. <laughs> All right, so okay. there we go. So all that's, the all the nasty things that are happening, that's also affecting journalism. That number was, two. Dumb, number two would be sports. Sports are indeed affecting journalism. Now, you realize that you're just naming... <laughs> Like, show up. like <laughs> journalism beats, right? You, yes. You've named politics, crime, yep. and... 
Well, but and we sports. wouldn't know about it if there was no journalism. But your but the list was that are affecting journalism right now. Twitter. Number one, number one, number one. See, I, all I could think of was Ken Paxton, but that's oh. just <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh, there it I've is. been trying to find a good guest to have them on to have them on the podcast to explain everything to a national audience and uh, or international audience, and turns out everybody's too busy covering the motherfucker to come on the show. Yeah, mm. boy, that would be good. To, I'm just going to do an episode about it tomorrow anyway. And that'll just kind of explain it. That'll just be cobbling together like, all uh, the other shit. He's corrupt and they can prove it. So there we go. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Well, uh, if, if Republicans. No, it's, say even, it's, even, it's even crazier than that. Like the man apparently is a habitual kleptomaniac, which yep. is like a subtext. Oh my he stole God. a Mont Blanc pen hey. when he was a lawyer and would not admit that he stole it until they produced. Video footage of him stealing it, and oh. then he gave it back. Wow! Uh, Texas AG, Texas Attorney General, yeah, Kim Paxton. Uh, yeah, but he almost was former impeached. Being impeached. Uh, yep. Well, almost. he is know. impeached. He may or may not be removed, depending on the Senate. Uh, but What's one the- of the votes <laughs> in the Senate is his wife. Uh, yep. oh. Yeah, and she won't recuse herself. She won't. No, nope. no, because they need every vote they can get to, to probably, try and stave it off. Uh, was was he the one who was in that clip um, of the the Texas Senate and and the guy who was drunk, who was like way drunk, couldn't okay. speak drunk, uh, or was no? That the although there were multiple. No, no, no. What? It was Ken Paxton actually used that as his defense. Yeah. Really? He said, He's like, like, like dude this man there. is drunk, <laughs> like, trying to draw a smokescreen away from the fact that he was getting impeached. So, like, he's like, like I'm not going to listen to this drunk guy. <laughs> oh, my God. That's a good bit. So, yeah, well, I guess opposition research. But, uh, yeah, let's. Welcome to Texas. Let's. I think. Just, I let's, think. Just, they, just, I think they give him the, the job back if they say, can you just repeat? Return all the pens. <laughs> Maybe that he just stole would, enough it's all about pens. pens. Yeah. You're yeah. absolutely right. It was yeah. all about those pens. Exactly. Like, I just really like this pen. Right. No, and he's one just he like gives to Brian. This is the success pen. I am. There I am go. not. I am yeah, not. He just keeps, he just keeps <laughs> finding pens. Yeah. I, I just, other people's hair. <laughs> there we go. Right. I like. I like to imagine that he just looks them all down and he's like, "This is a lie." <laughs> you are all liars. I have never in my life stolen a pen, and that's why I'm putting my foot down. Bah! And then all of them, just like like the shining elevator level of pens, just pouring Flattering. out of Flattering. every Flattering. element, out of his pants, out of his like like they're falling out of his hair. A good like forty five seconds for it's so many. It looks like Mont one of those Saturday pens. Night Live skits with the vomit. Too yes, yes. It's that bad. And they're just <laughs> leaning into it at that point with music. It's actually yeah. so many pins that it's a wave that carries them out the door <laughs> yes. and into the I'm street. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But to journalism. <laughs> I, uh, journalism. Yep. Great list. Yep. Great Thank list, you. everybody. Yes. Great yes. list. Yes. Thank you. I picked up a pen here at the studio one day. So it was, an, it was a nice silver looking pen. One of the nice ones where you twist half of it to make the actual nib come out. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was like, oh, this is a nice pen. You know, I've had, I've had it on. I put it in my bag. I took it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was a nice pen. No one was using yeah. it. It was yeah. on Thanks, the desk. Ken. Yeah. <laughs> Don't impeach me for that. The kids are calling it Paxtoning. <laughs> and PayPal. your producer may be doing it. <laughs> so I've had this pen. I've had it for I had it for a few weeks, and then I was like, "There's something weird about this pen. Like when I twist it, you can tell like uh, it keeps going, like it, like it's broken. It made me think, oh, it's broke. Like it's in here, it's in the studio because it was like broken or something. And somebody so like, was just like, "Fuck this pen, just fuck, it. fuck it, <laughs> fuck this pen." So I'm like, okay, well maybe I can like WD-40 it or something to fix it. And I pull it apart, and I remember, oh, this is the pen that has a knife blade in it. <laughs> I've been carrying a knife around me. <laughs> oh, my oh my god! So, it was a knife the whole time. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. I, 
I don't know. I was waiting for the moment where I take it on an airplane and they catch it in TSA. Because I had that. We, we talked about it on the show a, a few years ago when it happened, but we were coming back from one of Brian's shows and uh, uh, I had, he's got a, ha- he uses a hammer in his, in his set. And I guess I, I must have packed it wrong or something. And it ended up in my bag, in my backpack. Yeah. It probably got left behind. And then you're like, oh, yeah, it. like it was like the end yeah. of the show. I like, I, saw it and put it there because the bags were already packed or something um and so they're like yeah we have to confiscate this we just have to steal your hammer oh my (laughs) god so like that was at least that was a hammer you know and i wasn't in texas where they took it but um i definitely don't want to be caught with a hidden blade that i didn't know about yeah sorry officer i didn't know that blade was there in my pen Whoops! Oops! It was I wouldn't pen? say it like that. That sounds suspicious. That sounds suspicious. That sounds bad. Yeah. 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 How yeah. Do you should say, say it with that? a smile. Oh, uh, that's not my pen. <laughs> I didn't mean to put that in there. <laughs> I didn't, Wait, I didn't, didn't know, mean to put that. In, I didn't it's not know your pen. <laughs> I didn't mean to put that. Is in. this a knife in my pen, or am I just happy to see you? <laughs> uh, gentlemen, uh, or sir, did you mean somebody told you to carry this pen onto the plane? It's not your pen, and yet you're carrying it. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> Take him away. Yeah. Take him away. Oh my god. It was a special <laughs> treatment. Yeah. Oh. But then I felt bad cuz just had to throw away one of Brian's hammers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he was like, "Oh, this cuz you know, he never unpacks those hammer. bags." Well, but he uses it. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway. Have you ever gotten caught with a half full bottle of water at TSA? Do you know what happens to you when you have water in your in your bottle of water no. at a TSA? Do they, do, do they shoot you directly in the head? Mm. Yeah. Wow. No, they yeah, they do you like no country for old men <laughs> mm-hmm. with the <laughs> with, with, with the, the cow, cow bolt. Yeah. yeah. The cow bolt. <laughs> uh no, they will tell you that you need to so you've already cleared all of TSA, you've gone through the, the thing, and they're like, You have water in there? I'm like, sir, is this yours? And it's like, Yeah, there's water in there. They kick you up back to the back of the oh, line. Man. What? You gotta you gotta they, dump they it. They missed it. Well, no, they caught it. Oh, okay. If they okay. missed it, then you're free to go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. But they will be like, you need to go. They, they won't let you dump it out on the backside. Oh, yeah. No. You can't do that. That's a, You got to go all the way back, dump it out on the front side, mm-hmm. and then walk back in. It is among the more humiliating things that can happen to somebody. That's the uh... thing. That's the thing, Justin. Yeah. I always follow the law. Are you a narc? No. Yeah. Are you, are you, no, are this are is you, an audio sorry, podcast. Officer, so this, 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 follow this is, the law. Yeah, so you need to. There needs to be an audio cue as, like, as yeah. I look at the camera. Yes. Okay. Oh. Yeah. They can't hear you looking at the camera. At the camera. Yeah. They can hear you put on an affected thing. Now but you they could don't say, know if you're "Yeah, like, you, you, you could." I'm putting on. But you're an actor. Why? Yeah. why? You know. Could you not just drink it? Like, no. what if you chug the whole thing? You gotta go. You can if you go to the back of the line. Well, imagine Aww. if it was alcohol or um, an explosive kind of... liquid. Like, yeah, it would be if it's. Mm. I guess you could be trying to smuggle that. it on the plane in your tummy. Yeah. Right. And then when you fart, <laughs> fart water. Deadly, it's gonna. Sarin gas. It's gonna be oh. sarin gas. Mm-hmm. Sarin gassy. Ted Saran gas. Let's stay away from that topic. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, about actually, creating really? sarin gas <laughs> naturally. I had a I had a similar thing. Wow, that's a good and, question. What's the most lethal thing you can produce with a fart? <laughs> like, is there something or the most mm. odorous or offensive like thing that you could create? Smoke mackerel. With, I mean, maybe I don't know. Like, yeah. like, cause that that would be the 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 joke but is a food that do? makes you fart. Yeah, but like, like, no, let's weaponize it. Let's mm-hmm. just be drinking. Yeah. the chemical compounds that are safe, mm-hmm. so you but, can. But literally, literally, you're firing out something that like would for real clear a room, like, or would make a hostage taking situation disperse. Yeah. Could you the, make the a crowd? Dis- the, whoa, the, sorry, you whiplash there. Okay, one more time. So you can use your farting power, your magic farting power. No, no, no. no. This is anybody can do it. No one's magic. This right? is science. It's not about who can. Okay, this indeed. is science. Right? Yeah. This is science. Uh-huh. This is MythBusters. That's right. Can you create sarin gas with your butthole? That's the episode title. Mm-hmm. Right? There it is. And mm-hmm. so we find out, okay, probably not because you have to drink things that are poisonous. Yeah. Yeah. But with digestible things, 
what would like, what's the worst like what would be closest to like tear gas or like something like that oh. like like something that would that would be well and and then if you get into the if you get into like the pepper spray tear tear gas thing then you're dealing with irritants right yes. then you're dealing with capsaicin yes. yep. which is not only going into your mouth presumably but through the rest of your body and then out of your sphincter imagine if they did that for riot crowd control <laughs> Everyone's getting rowdy. And they just pull like, their pants down, turn around. No, 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 no. no. So you have, you have, you have some, <laughs> you have some narcs, right? Narcs are in the crowd. Uh -huh. Oh, and, and everyone's like, oh. "Fuck the man! When they Fuck get the man! Fuck him!" And then you just Fuck. And then and somebody deadly. next to him is like, "Yeah, for real. Fuck the man!" Uh, uh, and, and then and meanwhile, just like that too. Chief of police. Blows, blows the penny whistle, <laughs> and then everybody, one out of every four protesters. <laughs> Wow. And me, everybody else is like, oh, my God, my fucking eyes. The man is fine, I guess. And they all go back to their co-ops. It's fine. I've learned my lesson. That's This is a revolutionary idea in police technology. <laughs> that should be all Robocop, they, all, too. Okay, two minutes. All Thank anyone you. needs to do is like, 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 Johnson, get in here. You're drinking the fart oil. <laughs> oh, God. The foil. Yeah. Yep. That's what they'll call because oh, they'll be police God. slang. Yeah, foil. I've been foiling for over two months, Chief. By the time you put me on the beat. Oh my God, that would that would help deter police brutality too, because you're the first on the list to take the fart oil if you're yeah, you've if been you're, written if you're up. Level one. Yeah, if you've been written up, you're then fart you're the level fart one. level one. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I mean, I guess once you've. Once you, once that secret is out, then everybody can do it. Right. Yeah. You can be then like, there's counter protests. You get you get arrested. That have a different thing, and then it's a fart war. Then everybody, then no one actually says anything. They just all gather together, and one group starts farting, and then the other group responds with their own farts, and then it it's just a whole thing. Imagine all right. Imagine a uh, it's like Moriarty like a master criminal yep and he's like picked up by the cops and they're like we finally got you like he's like oh yes you did and then he's like oddly calm and he's like sitting there he's sitting there in the back of the police car and he's like lovely day isn't it <laughs> and then all of a sudden you feel like he feels around mm, bites 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 that bites the tab immediately uh uh, uh slips on a little mask <laughs> Uh, uh, rips horrendous ass. Yep. The cops are like, you, you smell the <laughs> car crashes. He just walks away. Yep. Yep. As as the green gas comes out and he's doing the slow walk. Away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. bum, 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 bum. J J Abrams yep. uh, presents and the lens flare. Yeah. You know, I think. Animals do this all the time. I mean, they do. just the skunk. Yes. That's exactly. Or we're kittens. just, look, we just invented the skunk. We just invented <laughs> the skunk. We just invented the skunk. Good job. <laughs> Nailed it. There you go. <laughs> all right, Bryce. All right. Thank we you to the great room. <laughs> oh, that's good. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the green Green Knight? No! 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 No, this is the Great Knight Program! <laughs> Excuse me, the Great Knight Program here on Twitch. Thank you so much for joining us here. I'm so Bryce Castillo, thanking you. I'm thanking you. Oh, I'm thanking you. Uh, hello, everybody. Let's, uh, we got a few more minutes before we get started with the show. Uh, we'll do a little bit more of a pre show stuff here. Uh, I'm gonna go over to our birthday borner. This is the part of the show where we go check out our birthday borner and give out some shout outs to all of uh, all of you wonderful people and all of your loved ones. We had a few folks with some birthdays, including uh, Desop. Desop's birthday was on the 26th. Happy birthday, Desop. And uh, just another pilot's birthday was on a Friday. We don't know if it was this Friday or last Friday, but happy birthday to just another pilot. If you want to get your birthday shout outs, go to the birthday borner in the Discord. Discord.greatnight.tv. Uh, it might look empty. You may not be able to see other people's posts because that's security. That's security. So, sorry about it. 
Got a few more minutes before we get started with the show here. Hello, everybody. Uh, you want to do a little critical racing theory? Uh, first off, critical racing theory. A uh, new podcast is on the LFGX Patreon. So check it out, patreon.com slash LFGX. I got a new uh, hour long show. We we did uh, we did two uh, two sims in in that game or in that in that pod. We did uh, uh, a catering Grand Prix. We uh, took the menu of one of the trackside restaurants, Le Louis the Fifteenth, and we made the teams pick meals. Whoever got the cheapest meal uh, won won the race. Uh, check so that check that out. And then uh, and then what is it? Oh, we we pitted the the three the three prongs of the motorsport triple crown against each other in a rock paper scissors grand prix. So tune in for that and find out who uh, who won and. You know, a little bit of programming and data. I might learn a little bit about data. It's actually, it's actually cool. Hello, everybody. A few more minutes before we start the show. Daniel J. Newman letting us know Diablo 4 Early Access begins in 47 hours. <laughs> we got, we got one woo here in the, in, in the crowd. Uh, uh, this, uh, Diablo 4. Hmm. Diablo 4. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about it. Uh, Diablo 3 seems cool. Those games seem fine though so, yeah I, so I, I i mentioned a while ago that i hacked my playstation classic to put all of my legally dumped cd-roms on and uh, uh i still haven't had a chance to play it yet, but the, they got the original diablo on there um you see this they made a diablo game 20 years ago um but uh uh but but yeah so uh diablo 4 and then what, what's the other game coming out there's another game coming out this week um that was like a big deal. What is it? Does anybody know? Um, I'm not gonna remember it. It was, it's like another big game. Isn't it? Street Fighter VI, that's right, they can get deeper. Street Fighter VI uh, is out uh, now or this week. Uh, the Eurogamer review was pretty pretty positive on it. They said it's got a good single player campaign, which is fun, you don't see that a lot in fighting games. I'm a Tekken guy, I'm looking forward to Tekken 8. I'm ready for Tekken. Tekken that tech has got my characters and my and my and my people, you know. They got, you know, they got. They're bringing back Jun. They're bringing back Jun to Tekken Eight, which is great. Um, and I think they'll still have Asuka, um, but uh, but I'm excited to have Jun back. I uh, she I don't know. I thought she was very cool. And then you know they got they, she was only in two. She was only in Tekken Two, and then they killed her at the end of Tekken Two, and then they didn't like give us a replacement character until Tekken. Four, anyway. Uh, Open Bite is letting us know that uh, next week is the all the video game conferences. Uh, Ubisoft, some of the super, summer, summer Games Fest. And there is an Apple. There's uh, Apple's WDC is this week on the 5th, I think. And then, or maybe that's next week. And then Microsoft is, Microsoft is doing all sorts of stuff. I, I, I'm a techie guy. I'm a techie guy. Uh, so we were talking about uh, uh, hey, hey, Apple's gonna do the VR. Uh, they're they're supposedly gonna announce their mixed reality headset. Apple's uh, gonna VR. Apple gonna get a VR. The the VR for Apple. Well, Apple-y, I don't think it'll be VR. VR. I think it'll be cross R. I think it'll be XR. Bra- XR. Yeah. The uh, how de- how delectable. <laughs> I think that's uh they found that in a. Uh, in some of the data, in some of the, they sniffed out some of the files. And oh, it's going to be called XR. X R O S is the name of the operating system they found for it so far. Crossed reality operating system. Yeah, I don't know. It could be interesting. Apple, Apple does really cool stuff. Like I, when the Apple Watch came out, name I probably one thing. <laughs> well, when the Apple Watch came out, I was probably like, I don't, I'm not going to use that. And now I, this is my second one. I'm, I'm, I'm now I'm on my second Apple Watch. Yeah. You know, I mean. Uh, do you track your sleep? I don't. Do you? I, I started. Oh, how is that going? I like you, it. Do you sleep better? Um, No, I, <laughs> I think I just have evidence that I'm a good sleeper. Mm. But I do like seeing that. You like your when phone I, telling you, I, oh, you sleep, you sleep like a pro. Basically. You sleep like a professional. In fact, no, I, I actually think it's withholding. I would like it to be more direct. Oh? I would like it to say, like, I would like it to do for my sleep what it does for my workouts, where when you when you cross all your goals, 
there's a little thing and it's like man, 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 you're the best right yeah i want that but every morning so you would <laughs> say like <laughs> you slept like a like a goddamn champion you're you the, are you are the best that's right. i would like that but okay. instead it's it just kind of gives me um it, it i think it's good at like pointing out when i think i've been up for a while but really i was up for one minute oh uh-huh like that's that's what it's good because like, when you like, wake up you you have, li you have no sense of time at all at night in bed you have you if you're trying to go to sleep and you can't or if you wake up and you're trying to get back there's no sense of time well I've, i i had this not to be the stoner guy at the party but like uh i i've been having this thought lately mm -hmm. that the first thought you think of when you are asleep is man i'm really close to sleeping but i'm still awake <laughs> That's, if that didn't me to a fucking t right i i i need an app that will make me go to sleep will go make me go to bed <laughs> oh yes because i'll i'll sleep i'll sleep like a motherfucker I'll, I, I when i'm out i'm out um but i I don't know if it's just because I have like I have like child brain or something, but I just like want to. I don't want to go to bed. I won't go to bed, yeah. which is um, bad. Probably not good, huh? No, I mean I think that's human nature. Like want to stay up? Oh yeah, you have to. I mean that's why like some people like will like work out later in the day or or will wake Monsters. up early. Monsters. Monsters. I could never do that. I could ne actually. I would do that know. for a while, when, no, especially actually, in the no, summer. I used to. Yeah, no, I I used to go running at night. Actually, now that I think about it. Yeah, mm. at the summer, it's a. It's. I mean, if the if the if the uh, humidity's not bad, it's and you're in a good, well lit area. Um, it's okay. It's not bad to do a little walk, a little run around at night, as long as you're wearing high vis stuff. You know, reflector reflector stuff and stuff. Bonnie, you ever been a runner? I have. When I had a, like an adult, like, I don't know, as a grown up, I had something happen and it like really hurt my feelings so bad oh. that I became a ran a runner. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You're and like, fuck was, this and fuck it so much. I'm running. I'm running. Right now. I literally, the only way I could get relief from it was just to run. And so I would run religiously and it was amazing and then um and then i felt great so then yeah. i was done worrying about it that was it, it. that was it <laughs> it's it was one push of up and an egg on it what else are you gonna do yeah, with it i mean yeah and then i was just like okay i got through that time it's it's great you it's know. one of those annoying things that um that <laughs> all the advice about how to make your life better absolutely works Oh, like oh, if right. you just go walking, you'll feel better. I you will. This, you I, just yes. will. Man. I had this fuck, fucking man. thing, man, where I didn't have my gigantic water bottle. Oh. I had a smaller <laughs> water bottle. I know it was still in my house. I just wasn't using it. Yeah. Right. And yeah, yeah. I, I was uh, drinking just more like sparkly waters and everything. So I still thought I was drinking a lot of water. And then I'm like, man, I'm just gaining a little bit of weight and like I'm snacking a lot more. I need to start tracking my shit. I had all these crazy ideas and I'm like, maybe I just need to have my large bottle of water that I just drink all the time again. Sure enough, motherfucker, I just drank more water. Everything yeah. was everything was fine. No, right? This is true. Three square so meal. Annoying. I, I hate it. It's really it so annoying. annoying. It's awful. Okay, well, you know what's not annoying? The great night program and we're gonna uh, start that Bonnie, what, what do you think? Um, stools or no? Oh, what do y'all usually do? You stand? We, we, no, we are we are we are in the process. Uh, I said last week on the show we should have stools up here. Bryce pointed out a little haughtily uh, <laughs> there are like seven stools on stage. <laughs> All times. In fact, I'm worrying that there's too many stools. Yeah, yeah. So then oh, we sat on stools, stools last week, but. Uh, I wanted to give you the choice of whether or not you wanted stool or no stool. To actually sit on? Yeah. Have the option to. If you, you have the <laughs> okay. option to. No, I will not sit no on a stool. No sitting on a stool. No. Okay. okay. Right. What am I no working? Stool. If I sit on a stool, I am a mom with three children. I will fall asleep if I sit down. Some of us right. are working. Bad okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here we all go. Right. Let's do the program here. Uh, let's do our final checks, everybody. Oh. Making sure we're all good to go. All right. Uh, Brett, how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing very well, sir. I'm Lisa. I'm fine. Get in. Yar. Yeah. Oh, 
our wonderful studio audience. There we go. And I know Justin and Bonnie are ready to go. Everybody, thank you so much for joining us in the pre-show. It's patreon.com slash great night is where you can go to support us. We're going to do the show. Brett, are you ready to do the show? Let's do the show. We're going to do the show here. I'll count you in. 